sources from the Wall Street Journal to probably the throwaway paper that serves as a wrapper for supermarket ads featured the news that on August 20, 2024, a federal district court in Texas issued a nationwide order striking the Federal Trade Commission's final rule banning non-compete agreements. But I've yet to see one report that explains what this really means for you. I'm going to explain it in a moment. But first, let's start with some background. On January 5, 2023, the U.S. Federal Trade Commission, the FTC, proposed a broad new rule banning employers from imposing non-compete provisions on their workers. The rule would supersede all state laws, except to the extent that a state's law gives workers greater rights. Note that per the proposed rule, employer and worker are not limited to the true employer-employee relationship and include subcontractor and independent contractor relationships as well. Subsequently, the proposed rule with some modification was finalized and it was set to go into effect on September 4, 2024. As was to be expected, litigation ensued over the FTC's authority to issue the final rule. In the case at hand, brought by Ryan LLC and joined by plaintiff interveners, including the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, the plaintiffs initially obtained an injunction against the FTC's enforcement of the rule against them alone. The case moved forward until last week when the judge granted the plaintiff's motion for summary judgment and issued an order completely setting aside the final rule. In layman's terms, the, the court blocked the final rule from taking effect as to anyone. Now, if you wanna know why, I'm gonna explain it to you now, but if you don't care about the court's reasoning, fast forward about a minute and a half or so. The court's decision was based on two major grounds. The first ground was the scope of the FTC's statutory authority to adopt rules. Congress enacted the Federal Trade Commission Act in 1914. It contains multiple sections granting authority to the FTC. Section five of the act prohibits, quote, unfair methods of competition and grants the agency enforcement authority via adjudication. Section six of the act is entitled additional powers of the commission and grants the FTC certain administrative type powers, including at section 6G, the power to quote, from time to time classify corporations and to make rules and regulations for the purpose of carrying out the FTC act. In adopting the final rule, the FTC asserted that Section 6G empowers them to make substantive rules related to unfair methods of competition. However, the court disagreed, finding that Section 6G is a, quote, housekeeping statute that does not confer substantive rulemaking power. Therefore, the FTC exceeded its statutory authority in adopting the final rule. The second major ground for the court's decision was that it found that the final rule is arbitrary and capricious under the law governing agency rulemaking, that's the Administrative Procedures Act. The court came to that conclusion because it found that the final rule is, quote, unreasonably overbroad without a reasonable explanation. It imposes a one-size-fits-all approach with no end date, which fails to establish a rational connection between the facts found and the choice made. The court also stated that enacting that in enacting the final rule, the commission relied on a handful of studies that examined the economic effects of various state policies towards non-competes, but that the record shows no state has enacted a non-compete rule as broad as the final rule. The FTC's evidence compares different states' approaches to enforcing non-competes based on specific factual situations completely inapposite to the final rules in position of a categorical ban. As to the latter point, the FTC provides no evidence or recent basis. The commission's lack of evidence as to why they chose to impose such a sweeping prohibition that prohibits entering or enforcing virtually all non-competes 
instead of targeting specific harmful non-competes, renders the rule arbitrary and capricious. Okay, so what does this mean for you? Well, as to the final rule itself, that is a nationwide prohibition on non-competes, it certainly means that current enforcement is dead, but until the deadline for the government to appeal, and if so, the outcome of that appeal, it can't be known for certain whether the final rule will either Phoenix-like or Dracula-like, depending upon your position, arise from the dead. However, even if the final rule is completely dead, that does not mean that the issue itself is dead because depending on what particular state law applies, non-competes and other restrictive covenants might or might not be enforceable. In other words, things are more complicated than a narrow focus on the FTC's final rule. According to the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, 46 states permit non-compete clauses. However, it's certainly the fact that some of those states permit non-competes only under certain limited circumstances, as do, for example, California and Texas. But the reality for both businesses and for workers, or in the context in which most of our clients do business, hospitals, medical groups on the one hand, and physicians and other professionals on the other hand, it's even more complex. That's because despite the fact that some of these states have strong prohibitions against the enforcement of non-competes, California being the classic example, there are, depending upon the particular state, still ways to create agreements that can function as proxies for non-competes. Note that these issues are not only dependent upon the particular state law that governs, but also the particular facts involved. It's a significant issue, but it can have significant benefits for businesses and can have particular implications, sometimes bad, and perhaps surprisingly, sometimes a benefit for the worker. If you wish to discuss your particular situation, please contact me.